Guys, it's time we address the elephant in the room. And no, I'm not talking about the moose over there. The heavy car bug has been a long debated conversation in the Rocket League community. And while I'm not here to come up with scientific evidence of whether or not heavy car bug exists, I do have a theory that it might and what you can possibly do to fix that. So my theory on when you receive the heavy car bug is actually when you're possibly, I think, maxing out like a logical core in one of your cores that might be restricting a certain process of the game to run at its full potential. I'll get more into why I've come to that conclusion later on in the video. However, I do feel like a lot of people experience the heavy car bug because of many reasons. One, when I play my Rocket League game and I don't have Google Chrome open, I don't have Discord open and things like that, the game feels a lot better than as soon as I pull up like one of my favorite content creators, Tenacity Stream, and I'm watching that while I'm playing the game. Then I start to notice a little bit of resistance on my car while I'm playing, which might make me think that, oh, it might be utilizing the resources a little bit more. Now let's add other programs on top of that, okay? You have Google Chrome, then you have like something like Discord open, and maybe you even have Spotify open as well. All these resources will kind of like use each one of these logical cores and possibly restrict the free flowing movement of your game. I discovered this program called process lasso and after i downloaded this program by the way not sponsored just want to make that abundantly clear not sponsored just found a good piece of software that would help me limit some of the resources of my other programs while i'm playing rocket league to avoid getting the heavy car bug so you go ahead and download process lasso and then guess what you install it now my first piece of advice is to go up to this options tab up here and then hover cpu go to pro balance and turn off enable pro ba pro balance i don't know what it is and that's not what we're using the software for so now you're gonna want to click over to your active processes tab while you have um something that you think might consume a lot of resources such as google chrome because google chrome really does consume a lot of resources and in fact i would highly recommend maybe trying something out like opera gx where you can adjust these limits and stuff within the browser but you know a lot of us are attached to google, google chrome so this is a this is a fix for that you'll right click your your google chrome go to cpu priority and then hover the tab always that way you won't have to set it every single time you open up Google Chrome and then change your CPU priority for Google Chrome to below normal then go over to CPU affinity always select CPU and affinity and here is my thought process on selecting CPU affinity to have it not interfere with the logical cores of your Rocket League game is I think in your Rocket League game, you're going to want to set a good amount of logical cores to Rocket League, but have your heavy hitter softwares such as Chrome, Discord, and Spotify on their own separate logical cores. That way the two aren't really interfering. So my idea is to set it to the first CPU zero, which I would assume maybe a lot of like your main system software might run on might run on cpu zero and then do cpu zero nine ten and eleven that way i have four logical cores assigned to my other softwares that i'm using while i might be playing rocket league uh, or the other way around i might be using them while i'm playing rocket league <laughs> okay um just a note here as well I have six physical cores on my system, so that is why I have 12 cores, 0 through 11. A lot of people either have like four or maybe eight. I would suggest if you have four cores and eight logical cores to maybe assign 
maybe like three to your other software. I would do like zero and then your last two or something like that. So you'll want to exit out of that and then go over to IO priority. Do always. And I changed it to low. My thought press process on IO priority is I'm thinking it might be like in and out, maybe like controller or something like that, like controller input or I don't know, whatever, you know, I want my controller input to be dedicated more to Rocket League. So I set my IO priority to low and then memory priority. I go to always and I actually have memory priority on none. Um, I think if you're noticing your RAM percentages might be a little high, maybe turn this to low for these other softwares. I'm a strong believer in maybe like don't overdo something because then it might somehow mess with it. I don't really know. You know what I mean? Just don't overdo it. Do something that you might notice a small improvement in your game or something like that. And then if, you know, always in increments is what I think. So start with start with the minimal adjustments and then move up to more adjustments if you feel comfortable that's all now repeat this process for you know your other softwares you know your chrome discord and spotify i'm saying them all over again now what you'll want to do is you'll want to head over to your rocket league now i'm on my rocket league process here and we're gonna repeat the steps but in reverse order here here we go cpu priority always Set that to high. That way you get a little bit more priority from the CPU on Rocket League. Should help with improvement. CPU affinity. Always select CPU affinity. I think it's wise here to take your Rocket League off of those logical cores that you set for your, your other software. And remember, uh, don't set that CPU affinity for every software that's not Rocket League, of course. Just, you know, those those other ones that you might have open while you're playing Rocket League. Chrome, Discord, Spotify. I feel like that's pretty common for people to probably have open while they're playing Rocket League. So we're doing the other logical cores. That way they don't interfere because I really think it's when one logical core gets maxed, that's when you feel that heaviness. I don't have anything to prove that. I just have my experience with the software and the game and things like that and I have a little bit of tech experience I am a web developer after all but so I set mine to CPU 1 through 8 uh, and then for IO priority I have mine on high I don't think you should do critical here I feel like if you were to do critical um, it maybe it might interfere with like windows or something like that. Remember, we're not trying to do too much. We're just trying to slightly boost that feeling that that free flow feeling of that game of the game. You know, it, it, we don't have uh, NASA supercomputers. And in fact, maybe that would be the long term solution is to just buy it, better parts for your PC or a whole new PC that could be the the long-term fix but this is more of like a short-term fix for maybe like having a budget build or something like that so io io priority we're setting that to high memory priority we're gonna set that to always normal because there is no above normal option i thought that was kind of funny and then application power profile I have mine set to bit some highest performance, but I'm going to recommend for someone who's just trying this out to go high performance. That's just my recommendation. I feel like I've noticed sometimes like with my experience with the app is that if you set too many of these rules, you might, I feel like I, I noticed maybe even like a little bit of stuttering from having these rules, especially like if you have Google Chrome open, it always has like new processes. That, uh, just out of nowhere for some reason with Google Chrome and I felt like it was having to set that those rules on all the new processes that were popping up and stuff like that and then I felt like I might have been experiencing some stuttering so I took off like application power profile and memory priority but I don't know everyone's computer is different you might have a different experience who knows so now let's talk about the settings you might want to have in game 
that would be optimal to not receive the heavy car bug. So what you're going to want to do to achieve that is go to free play here, pick a stadium. I picked this stadium because I feel like it's a little bit more intensive on everything, right? So the first thing you'll want to do is hit your uh, settings, okay? And then go to video here. And I think it's best to do full screen. I don't know how much it really matters though, but full screen is a good option um, just to be on the safer side of things. And then you'll want to set your texture detail to really, I think what you prefer, uh, world detail to what you prefer, particle detail to, you know, what you prefer. Same, same with effect as well. And then I think it's good to uncheck all these besides transparent goal posts that will help you actually in game to know where the ball is. Let's say if you're sitting in the goal. So those could be some good settings. Um, I have anti-aliasing off. I don't think like these settings, most of these settings are preference. What I really wanted to get into was like your frames per second, right? So uh, I used to play with uncapped frames actually, but once I combined this with process lasso, I ended up uh, capping my frames and noticing a little bit better of performance for my game, right? So go, go here and cap your frames to something that uh, seems right. And how, how you can find what would be the best place to cap your frames at is you can go to interface here and then turn on performance graphs and do performance summary, okay? And then go into your game, right? And then look at your FPS at the top there. You want it to be fairly consistent. Um, so you can up your FPS until like, let's say, um, you kind of notice that it, it stops being consistent as much. Uh, my, my, I still do experience some drops and stuff, but it's fairly consistent and you want to see the, the green, the green numbers and the yellow numbers, like they're all right. Before this, I used to only see red. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you. So this has helped me significantly. Another thing I wanted to talk about though, that I use is I have Bacchus mod. Right, and if you don't have Bacchus mod, I'll provide a link in the description below of how to get Bacchus mod, or just like the link to Bacchus mod. A lot of people have it, so I'm assuming you have it. Um, I installed a plugin for Bacchus, Bacchus mod called uh, FPS Cap here, and that's why you're seeing my frames being capped. Well, they were until I adjusted them in the menu, but you can go here and just like click to reactivate that. Uh, I set mine for 330 FPS because that's where I noticed like the FPS kind of drop off rate, right? where like. It was too variable, so I wanted to bring it bring it in a little bit, have it be consistent. Um, but like I when I when I did this, I was playing the game and I was kind of watching my FPS and trying to push it as far as possible for in-game FPS because like the more FPS you have, like <clears throat> just the better the game is. I'm not even gonna lie to you, the, the game is so much better with high FPS. Like it makes a huge difference. So for me to sit at 330 is like what I could really push with my PC, but, um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be, like, totally honest with you guys, I really want to get a new PC and, and push more frames in Rocket League, I feel like it would be beneficial to my gameplay, but, um, yeah, like, just kind of crank up the slider, and then you see how it's kind of, like, even in idle, it's kind of, like, dropping a little frames, it's not too bad, actually, it's doing pretty well today, then again, I don't have, like, Google Chrome open right now, so that could be why. So I brought, I reeled it back down to 330. You're gonna want to set this FPS cap while you have some like software, some softwares open that you'd be running while you play uh, Rocket League, just to get something consistent. Cause like, I like to set this and then I'll turn my performance graphs off and just enjoy the game and like, not not trip about it so much. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the main thing is setting something as consistent as possible. Is kind of like the best thing you can do. I don't know how I didn't get my flip there. But when I used to play Rocket League with like uncapped, I just felt like too many times that I would just get like these crazy frame drops. Um, and I think a lot of people might blame that on server lag, but it, it really is just your client and like it probably maxing out a logical core. So just uh, just think about those things when you're I don't know when you're setting your stuff. So after some further use of the program. I also discovered another function that they have. Uh, when you right click your program, 
Uh, you see CPU sets. CPU sets is kind of nice because then you don't have to select CPU affinity. And in fact, I wouldn't be running both CPU affinity and CPU sets. It's either one or the other. And so the feature CPU sets is a little bit less restrictive of um, what logical cores the software can use. Potentially, it can, it'll prioritize using the cores in the CPU set, but will sometimes uh, use some of the other cores. It'll just be a lot less like threads on the other cores. So CPU sets is also a good alternative if you don't want to go like too deep into like these programs can only use these cores. It, it, it'll prioritize, hey, try to use these cores as much as possible. And if you need to use the other cores, you can use the other cores. So that's CPU sets. So you don't want to be running CPU sets and affinity together. You're going to want, want to select one or the other. So let's say you have your, um, your other software running on, you know, CPU affinity, uh, 11, 12, 13, right? Now you can un you you would go to CPU affinity, select none, so it's using all the CPUs again, and create a CPU set by hovering CPU set, going to always, and then creating that set and selecting the CPUs from there. That would be a less uh, restrictive way to assign what CPUs for a software you might want to use. So that I would also recommend using that. I've been doing that lately, and it's been working great. My my Rocket League feels incredible. So. Uh, give it a try. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching my video. This helped me with my heavy car bug, and I hope it helps you as well. If you're still noticing a little bit of heavy car bug after doing these steps, it might be time to consider upgrading some components. It seems like Rocket League might be a little heavy on the CPU. Uh, it might not show it in the percentage, but I do feel like heavy car bug comes from CPU usage. Now, let's say you don't have the best graphics card, then maybe it comes from that as well. But I feel like the game relies heavily on the CPU. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, leave a comment down below what you guys think. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to watch more of my content. I do a lot of Rocket League content, but I also am variety, so we can, we can play whatever game we want here. I don't care. I, I just love playing games. Like the video. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>